Hello again, everyone. It seems that Eric Dubé has put out a new video. It's called Flat Earth, Magnification of Sun and Moon Near Horizon. I don't know about you, but I just can't wait to see what he has to say this time. When light of any kind shines through a dense medium, it appears larger, or rather gives a greater glare, at a given distance than when it is seen through a lighter medium. All right, I think I see what you're doing already. You're trying to bolster that perspective argument about sunsets. This is more remarkable when the medium holds aqueous particles or vapor in solution, as in a damp or foggy atmosphere. You can see this by standing within a few yards of a street lamp and noticing the size of the light. On going away to many times the distance, the light upon the atmosphere will appear considerably larger. The glare around the street light may appear larger, due to particulate matter or condensed water droplets in the atmosphere around the street light, but the street light itself will still diminish in size as you move farther away. This phenomenon may be noticed to a greater or lesser degree at all times, but when the air is moist and vapory, it is more intense. It is evident that at sunrise and at sunset, the sun's light must shine through a greater length of atmospheric air than at midday, besides which the air near the earth is both more dense and holds more watery particles in solution than the higher strata through which the sun shines at noonday, and hence the light must be dilated or magnified as well as modified in color. Dilated or magnified, huh? Now I wonder if you'd mind explaining why it's so consistent every day, every time we look at it. If you're saying it's atmospheric distortion, which is really what you're saying, we would see differences. Changes in air density and moisture content happen on a regular basis, and yet the sun always appears to be the same angular size. So the sun, as it sets towards the horizon, from a viewer's perspective on Earth, simultaneously gets bigger due to the reason given above, and smaller due to the law of perspective. The net result is what you see. Notice how the distant lights have a brighter and bigger glare even though they're further away. Many contributing factors, including wavelength, diffraction, air pressure, air temperature, width of aperture, altitude, humidity, and clarity, all contribute to the net result. The amount to which the sun and moon will be magnified, due to the above reasons, and shrink due to the law of perspective, will depend on all of the above. And there's always a perfect balance between the amount of distortion provided by the atmosphere and the distance the sun is allegedly moving away. It's always the same angular size. What the hell's diffraction? Next time you might want to look for books with pronunciation keys for you to quote mine. Enature.com writes, The moon's warm color when seen at lower angles is caused by the relatively larger amount of atmosphere through which one is observing it as compared to when the moon is right overhead. This additional atmosphere scatters the bluish component of the light of the moon, making the low-lying moon appear redder to the observer's eyes. If you look later when the moon is higher above the horizon, you'll see it appears much whiter than earlier in the evening. That's coloration, not size. Even you must recognize that. It does change, and the changes are mostly due to the atmosphere. So I can show you a picture of the sun setting in the desert where it's very dry, and you'll see the sun shrink and shrink into a tiny, tiny pinprick before it disappears into the horizon. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to call bullshit on that one. No one has ever seen the sun shrink to a pinprick. I'm guessing that came from a video by Truth Not Trolls Sturrock, or something of that sort. You should have paid closer attention to the rest of that video. In no two examples does the behavior of the sun match. And then I can show you another video of on a more over the ocean, say, on a more humid day, the sun is going to actually expand a little bit due to the atmosphere and then disappear into the horizon like a big ball, as, as many people have seen it. 
but either way that it disappears, whether it disappears into a pinprick before leaving the horizon, or it expands and, and goes down the horizon, it's simply moving away from your perspective, as we talked about. It's not actually going down, just like a row of street lamps aren't getting shorter and shorter as they get farther and farther away from you. It's just an element of perspective. Ooh, I'm afraid I'm going to have to cry bullshit yet again. Even if you did come across some miraculous atmospherics that caused this little clip to be somehow, oh, I don't know, reality, which it isn't, what about every other day of the year? Every other day of the year, the sun remains the same angular size as it progresses across the sky. Okay, you can all relax. That's the end of the Eric Dubé show. I wanted to get through it as quickly as possible. You know, like ripping off a band-aid. If you do it quick, it's less painful. The Flat Earther's insistence that the sun never drops below any horizon has been refuted many times. Well, by all of us, honestly. Saying, well, if it doesn't drop below the horizon, why don't we see it anymore? And their answer was always the same. It's perspective. And then they'd refer to a picture of a very long hallway where all the lines actually do converge in the distance. Now, in order for sunsets to be caused by perspective, there would have to be a noticeable change in the size of the sun. And there isn't. The apparent size of the sun is always between 32.5 arc minutes and 31.5 arc minutes. The former at the perihelion and the latter at the aphelion. Looks like Eric's denying this and just saying, it just looks like it's always the same size. And as luck would have it, this magnifying property of the air is a smooth, contiguous process that corresponds exactly to how much smaller the sun would get as it recedes. All right, so what do you folks think? Is Eric an idiot? Or is he a liar? Please let me know in the comments below. Well, once again, I'd like to thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.